Hey guys, so recently my Common App essay has been popping off and doing way better than all my videos on my channel. So I thought I would kind of ride that wave and make another video about the Common App essay and common mistakes that you should not do because some of these make me want to rip my hair out and it makes me cringe so much. Uh, sorry guys <laughs> and also the tips I came up with that I'm gonna share with you later in this video are tips that I haven't really seen anyone else on YouTube talk about in their videos so tune in for those because they might help you a lot. <laughs> so even though I stopped editing your guys' essays, I've still read quite a few of essays, like 40 or 50 essays so far. And I've seen a lot of common mistakes present themselves and I found myself writing the same comment over and over again. So I thought I would just make this video and tell you guys all at once, like hit you with those tips. And also keep in mind that all of this is my personal opinion. So take everything with a grain of salt, but also keep in mind that if I find a cringy there's a high possibility that your app reader and other people will find it cringy as well let's not stall let's just get into it yeah <laughs> Ow. So the first common mistake I see in a lot of your guys' essays is that a lot of people are trying to half-ass their metaphors. So I don't like it when people set up these huge elaborate metaphors in their introduction paragraph and make it seem like it's going to be a significant part of their essay, but then they basically don't talk about it or mention it again for the rest of the essay until the conclusion paragraph where they just hit you with it, they slide in again with the metaphor and it's kind of like, I'm dark. And I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? Like you didn't elaborate on it at all. To me, when people decide to use metaphors in this way, it comes off as really forced to me and like you're just trying to use a metaphor for the heck of it to make your essay a little more interesting to the app reader. But I honestly think it does the opposite thing where it just kind of turns me off from your essay. So if you end up adding a metaphor into your essay, I would make sure that it's a significant part of your essay and it's integrated throughout the entire essay instead of just like the beginning and the end. That way, I think it's going to be able to maintain the flow of your narrative and not sound so forced since your narrative and the metaphor is kind of intertwined and they won't be able to work without each other. And another thing I'll add to this whole metaphor thing I'm talking about is that if you do decide to use a metaphor, make sure it's not a cliche and really generic one. To me, the point of a metaphor is to bring a really fresh and new perspective to how you're feeling slash felt and it should be personal to you. I don't think you should just choose a random object or something to make a metaphor out of just for the heck of it because you think it would fit well with your narrative. I think if you decide to use a metaphor, that object should mean something to you personally. If you use a really generic metaphor that everyone's heard of, it kind of defeats the purpose of the metaphor where it's supposed to bring a fresh perspective. People don't want to hear the same thing over and over again where they've read hundreds of times. And also when I read these really generic cliche metaphors, it ends up sounding like a cop out to me where they couldn't think of a good metaphor so they just decide to use one that someone else already came up with. And the second mistake I see a lot of people making is they make these really direct statements like this taught me dot 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 or I learned dot 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 I'm happy when I dot 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 I don't want to hear these direct statements like avoid those direct statements I don't want you just telling me stuff and telling me how you feel I want you to show me through your words your actions within the essay and through personal experiences that you had if you find yourself having to use these direct statements to get a point across in your essay I think you should focus more on making your essay more descriptive more personal more specific and incorporating more personal experiences into it so you can really show who you are without just making blank statements at the reader because at the end of the day readers are going to find your personal experiences a lot more compelling than you just telling me who you are through these statements get rid of those direct statements right now go on your comment app essay right now and get rid of them i'm pointing at you you need to do it and the third common mistake I see in a lot of essays is there's a lack of a catalyst. And what I mean by that is in a lot of common app essays, including mine, a lot of people choose to use the narrative of personal transformation and a personal change that they went through. And I read a lot of essays that follow this narrative, but I found that a lot of people don't really include what 
cause the change that they're talking about. A lot of the times they just say something like, it just wasn't the same anymore. I changed, I became better without actually telling me what caused that change, what caused them to be better. Like as a reader, it's really hard for me to believe that you just changed overnight just because, just because you decided that you wanna be better one night. Like that rarely happens. Usually something pushes you to make that personal change. And going off that catalyst point, a lot of people do end up including a catalyst in their essay, but then that catalyst ends up being something that's not themselves or not coming from themselves or their experiences, and it comes from another person or thing. What I mean by that is I've read some essays where people say, my parents made me dot dot dot, my parents caused me dot dot dot, losing my cat made me dot dot dot, and they just say whatever changed within them. I think that's better than just not including a catalyst at all, but also I think at the end of the day, the focus of the essay should be you. Even if it does have to do with that person or that place, at the end of the day, at the core of the narrative, it should come down to you and you being the source of all this personal change. And so an example I'm just gonna like think of off the top of my head, don't use this. Hypothetically, if someone said, my fish died, so I changed and now I'm more organized. And as a reader, when I hear that, I'm like, first of all, like, what caused, like, you to go from point A of your fish dying to point B of being more organized? I care, as a reader, more about the in-between and the thought process and the personal process that you went through to get from point A to point B rather than the actual, like, destination, if that makes sense. So, like, the way I would, like, frame it would be, oh, my fish died because I lost my fish food, so I had to make the personal choice to become more organized so stuff like that never happens again. <laughs> That's a really weird example, but it kind of gets to the point of even if another thing or person had to do with that catalyst, at the core, it's still you who made the decision to make all these changes. <laughs> I feel like I really explained that badly, but moving on. <laughs> And the third common mistake I see on so many essays, I think this might be the most common mistake I see, is that a lot of people focus on people that aren't them for like the majority of their essay and I don't understand why they do this. I cannot count the number of essays that I've read where people spend like half of their essay, like two or three whole paragraphs talking about someone, something, somewhere that isn't them. And I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> Don't talk about how great your mom or your cousin is and how they're the best thing that's been created since sliced bread. To be honest, I don't really care about them like at all. I want to know how great you are, how awesome you are, and why I should want you to attend my college instead of your boyfriend. Like that's not what I want. College apps don't follow this transitive property where if other people in your life is amazing, then you're also amazing. Like, I'm not going to make that connection. I want you to tell me why you're great and why I should want you at my school. Talk about yourself in your essay. Like, this is the one time where you should just talk about yourself and be a little bit narcissistic, you know? Hype yourself up. Don't hype other people in your life up. Of course, like other people in your life that had a significant impact on you can be a part of your essay. And I think if you have an experience like that, you totally should, but they should be at most like one paragraph and then you should transition into you and talking about how great you are. Hype yourself up. Yeah. <laughs> and the fourth mistake I see in a lot of essays is that a lot of people use an excessive amount of adverbs and weird descriptions in their essays. While I was reading essays, I found that some people tried to force descriptiveness into their essay by saying shit like, While I sat eagerly at my oak dining table, I had a earnest conversation with my understanding mother about my uncertain future while I ate dry sourdough bread hungrily. Like, more than half of those descriptive words and descriptiveness don't tell me anything more about you. They're just kind of like filler words where they're like, oh, this makes me sound like I know what I'm writing about. Like, no. Like, I say so much that I want you guys to be descriptive in your essays, but I want that description to bring me into your life. And this can come in various forms of being descriptive when you talk about your background, being descriptive when you talk about significant moments in your life. I want description there where I feel like I get a clear image of those big moments in your life. I don't want to know about your dry sourdough bread. 
Also, I'm not the biggest fan of when I see people use a lot of adverbs like hungrily, eagerly, happily, sadly. I feel like when people use a lot of these adverbs, it just sounds really forced and really elementary to me when I see them just trying to add in these adverbs to add a little pizzazz to their essays. Moving on. <laughs> And the fifth and the last mistake I'm going to be talking about today that I see in your guys' essays is repeating the same idea over and over and over and over again, like so many times. I think this might be the most common comment I comment on your guys' essays. <laughs> Every single sentence that you decide to include in your essay should be essential for the narrative and should bring something new to your essay. I really dislike it when people just say the same thing over and over again in different ways under the disguise of being descriptive and adding description into their essay and i've seen this a lot with transitions where people use the last sentence of the previous paragraph in a different way for their first sentence of the next paragraph like a random example would be if someone decided to end one of their paragraphs with something dot 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 and i started my first charity and then they start their next paragraph with although starting my own charity was very fulfilling to me blah 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 dot 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 like you're basically just saying the same thing back to back when people use those repeats as transitions and just in their essay in general it comes off as really elementary to me and ultimately ends up slowing down the momentum of the whole essay and it leaves me bored like i should not be bored even for five seconds while i'm reading your essay i should be constantly learning something new about you and when you choose to just repeat these ideas it just makes me kind of be like like i already know this about you why am i hearing it again so yeah, just don't do that. Get rid of those repeats. Remember, every single sentence, I might even say every single word in your essay should have its place and should be essential for your essay to work and essential for your narrative. And after you delete all those repeats in your essay, you'll have so many words left that you can spend on developing your narrative even more and developing the ideas you already brought up. Keep in mind, it's not the number of ideas you bring up in an essay, it's about how well you develop them and how well you can portray that to the reader and make it seem real and make it seem like they're in your shoes actually experiencing all these things actually making all these realizations you made in your life and all these personal changes so yeah that's gonna be the end of the video today and i hope you guys really enjoyed all these tips i shared with you and if you really like this video and you want me to make more videos on common mistakes and tips i see when i'm reading your guys's essay comment down below like this video subscribe touch whatever the ring bell thing and i'll try to make more videos like this and i hope you guys have an amazing day and i will see you guys soon bye guys so destroy the evidence leave not a trace burn it in paper trash that way they can deny possessing the illegal